Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a tenant in Cisco ACI. And I'm going to speak about different components that you need to create before completing the configuration of a tenant. But before that, let's speak about different components first of all and see what we need to create a tenant using them. Uh, let's say that, for example, I have kind of a fabric here and I don't really care about what uh, switches we have here and let's say that we have some spines here and some leaves and all of them are connected in in a fashion that Cisco ACI needs it and they are connected to the outside world and in this outside world of course there are different domains or entities which are connected to my data center to my fabric so everything which is connected to my fabric is going to be a domain so let's say that this domain belongs to a customer let's say this customer's name is ANA and this customer has a bunch of virtual machines here so there is something like a virtual machine manager here and under this virtual machine manager it has several virtual machines all of them purpose uh, save some purpose in and this virtual machine of course is connected to me using two different ports uh, of course, I can have some virtual port channel, but let's say that this is a normal port channel connected to one of the leaves here. So basically, the leaf and spine is not going to be the center of my uh, focus. What I am trying to focus is this kind of a connection which is connected to this domain. The domain name is ANA, let's say. And this whole domain is going to represent a tenant. Now, what do I need in creating uh, this tenant? To create this tenant, what I need is, first of all, the tenant's name itself. So there should be a name for this tenant. So let's say we already know the name of that. And under tenant, we are going to create one or more VRFs. And why we should have more than one VRF? This depends on the policy of the company, which needs more separation between the routing table or not. We don't really care whatever VRF they need, we are going to create that. And then we are going to create bridge domains. So bridge domains, again, can be one or more. And a bridge domain is going to represent a VLAN inside our network. So if my customer has, let's say, 20 VLANs, and they need to, you know, port these VLANs into my network and then connect to these VLANs on another side of the network from, let's say, another branch of the network or whatever that is uh, there, they need to, you know, uh, send the traffic inside my fabric. And inside my fabric, I don't have VLAN. I have something re that represents a VLAN and that is called a bridge domain. So that's going to, you know, convey the traffic from one side to another side. And bridge domain, of course, is going to have a number like VLAN number. But bridge domain number, of course, is a 24-bit number, which is going to be something like 16,777,216 different combinations. And then under bridge domain, I can have subnets. Why would I have subnets under bridge domain? So let's say that I have this bridge domain and I have different, you know, subnets in different VLANs under this virtual machine manager. So what I want to do is to create a subnet for each one of them and I'm going to create a gateway for them. Why gateways? Because the routing is not going to happen in this domain. They are not, we are not going to be involved in the routing. So what we need to do is to just send the traffic from one side to the other side. And for each VLAN, we need to create a subnet. So I can have different subnets. Let's say, for example, uh, 10, 10, 1. And because I need to give it a gateway, uh, instead of, you know, typing the subnet ID, I need to go with the gateway address. So let's say so 10, 10, 10, 1, 1 slash 24 is one of the gateways. 10, 10, 2, 1, slash 24 is going to be another one. And let's say that I'm going to have 10, 10, 3, 1, slash 24 as another subnet. So these are the components that I need to create for creating a tenant. So let's go and start the configuration. I'm going to log in to my Cisco APIC. And you can see that this is a Cisco APIC simulator. So I cannot really show everything inside this, but Creating a tenant, of course, is going to be super easy and uh, streamlined in here. So you can easily see what to do and you can configure it on your own simulator. Also, this is version 5.2.5. Uh, 
but I believe that version 6 is out and you can use that as well. So to create a tenant, I need to go to Tenants tab and you can see that there are three tenants pre-configured here. Common is something like a global VRF, so anything that you create here, like a DNS server, DHCP server, or stuff like that, can be available to other tenants. Infra is going to be uh, the tenant that is created for inside our fabric. So everything that happens inside this fabric is going to be managed by Infra. Let's say, for example, uh, Infra Fabric Messaging or IFM is managed by this. And also we have management, which is going to be the management IP addresses of every uh, switch that I have inside my network. So that's going to be connected to management, uh, you know, tenants. And you can see that some of them have two VRFs, some of them have, you know, two bridge domain, the others have one bridge domain. So it really uh, depends on you how many bridge domains or VRFs you need to create. For my company, I need only one VRF and I do not really need more than that. So I'm going to start creating a tenant. To create a tenant, I now need to do is to click on this Add Tenant. And then I'm going to create it using the name. So that's going to be A and A. And of course, you can see that this ampersand is not accepted. So what I'm going to do is to use an underline for that. And then the alias is going to be A and A. And again, under alias, it doesn't support this so what i'm going to say is a and a so i can have a description but i don't really care and that's going to be all i need to create a tenant for now so click on submit the tenant name is added to the tenant list here if i just go to all tenants i can see that to go to the tenants i can double click on this or i can just go over here and i can find the a and n tenant here so clicking on that now what i need to do is to create a vr for that if I just open this, you can see that there is a networking part here. I can open networking and there are VRFs. So if I just open here, you can see that right now there is no VRF created for this tenant. So to create a VRF, I'm going to right click on this and click on VRF. And then it can have a name. So let's say that A and A1 is going to be number one. VRF which I'm going to add it add to here and I'm just adding this number because I might need to have more VRFs in the uh, future but I don't really have any specific name for that I can change it later of course now there are some stuff here that I can just uh, check this um, one of them is going to be IP data plane learning which is enabled the other one is going to be the policy control enforcement detection that's going to be ingress. This is interesting because later we can just check to see where the policies are going to be enforced. And most of the time ingress is going to be the one. If ingress is not possible, then egress is going to be the one which we want to have. Also, the policy control enforcement reference is going to be enforced. Okay, uh, like I said, this is not so important, but you can just change them. And click on next. Here it says you should start creating a bridge domain. So the bridge domain can have a name. Let's say, for example, A and A, again, one, because I might have more bridge domains in the future. And here it says, what type of bridge domain do you want to have? Fiber channel or regular? And what type of forwarding do you want to have? Optimized or custom? I'm going to go with defaults, and I'm not going to change anything. The MAC address, of course, is going to be created by default for me. And here, if I want to have IGMP snowpin policy, let's say, for example, I'm going to have uh, multicast in the future, I can just go with one of the policies or I can create one. For uh, MLD snow policy or monitoring policy or network discovery policy or stuff like that. And you can see that our plugin is enabled. By default, this is not. We are going to change this in the future. So I'm going to click on finish. And this VRF is created. I can just go to this VRF and check the policy. And if I want to make any changes, I can just do it right here. Okay, now that I have created this, I can see what I need for the networking. You can see that I have a bridge domain created right now. I can create more bridge domains and there is a bridge domain ID, something like a VLAN ID, 
and that is going to be here. It is called segment, and you can see this is kind of a VLAN ID. As a matter of fact, that's the bridge domain ID which is assigned to this bridge domain. I can have more bridge domains, like I said. I don't have any L2 out, I don't have any L3 out, so I'm not going to configure anything other than this. But these are the things that you need to create the bridge domain. But what I need more than that, if I just open this bridge domain and go to here, there is a part that says, what are your subnets? So again, based on what I have for my network, for my tenants network, of course, I can right click and click sub create subnet. And I can give it the IP address. So it was 10.10.1.1 10, 10, 1, 1, slash 24. This was the very first one. And you can see that the defaults are OK. So I'm going to click on Submit. I can add more. Let's say 10.10.1.2.1 10, 10, 1, 1, slash 24 is going to be the next one. Click on submit, and the last one is going to be 10, 10, 3, 1, slash 24. So these are the gateways that I have created for my uh, tenant. So basically, almost everything is created from the networking part of the uh, tenant. The next thing that we might need to do, and of course, I'm not going to do in this part of the course, is going to be uh, creation of the application profiles and creation of EPGs and different, you know, uh, what is it? The contracts that uh, we need to have to connect those EPGs to each other, which is going to be another video for you. And uh, for now, that's going to be all we need to create a tenant.